So obviously this morning we're recognizing Memorial Day tomorrow, and um, I'm excited to do so in a way that I think I never have been before, and, uh, and we'll explain a little bit of that as we go. I want to give you a little history. I love, I love doing this. I love researching um, our holidays and other belief systems. So here on Memorial Day, as Hector said, it's obviously our country's time of remembrance and honoring the men and women who paid the ultimate price in war. But before it became a federal holiday, which was 1971, uh, it was called Decoration Day. Many of you remember that? It was called Decoration Day. And the dates have changed. Now it's, it's, it's uh, static at the last uh, Monday in the month of May. Prior to that, it floated, too. It's also the unofficial start to summer, right? It's a big travel weekend. It's also a big shopping weekend, right? Which is interesting. We talked about that for Mother's Day, um, how the... Uh, Economy takes over some of these, these things, but it's really one of the most popular shopping weekends, which is interesting. Anyway, Memorial Day has its roots in the Civil War, and it wasn't until um, World War I that we started including all the men and women who had died in combat and uh, in any American war. I tried to look at how many people that was. I saw varying websites with varying information. Let's just say it was a lot. Has been a lot. One is too many. Right? One is too many. So I believe we can we can do this a little better. So, you know, as we honor our country, I wanna include this idea of evolution. You know, people are jumping higher, jumping further. We're doing all kinds of things that we didn't do 100 years ago, right? Physically and, and uh, mentally, I think, emotionally, I think we can do better by being in a place of peace, right? And so I'm going to talk this morning, and I want you to think about what you're willing to sacrifice for peace. What are you willing to sacrifice to have peace in your life, to have peace in our country, to have peace in the world? What are you willing to sacrifice? I think that um, President John F. Kennedy had a great suggestion for us. I might uh, uh, twist his idea a little bit when he said, you know, ask not what you can do for your country, uh, sorry, (laughs) what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. How about if we really made it a country of peace, how about that? Wouldn't that be a grand thing for our country and for the world? And we can step up and do that. I believe we can step up and do that. So how do we do it, though? You know, how do, how do, we, how do we make it a more peaceful society? But that's my intention this morning that we look at this idea. I think that we might have to give up a few things. We might have to give up the idea that um, war is the only way to solve conflict or that any kind of aggression is the only way to, to solve conflict. I think that maybe we have to let go of our belief that war is justifiable, that it's warranted, that it's inevitable. Therefore, we have to give up the belief in separation, right? We have to give up the belief that other, another person, another country is separate from us. It always boils down to that, I think. And can one person make a difference? I think sometimes people think, well, you know, I have this feeling about it, but can I make a difference? And I say, absolutely, yes, you can. And the Dalai Lama said that peace is not something which exists independently of us, nor does war. Peace in the world depends upon peace in the hearts of the individuals. So 
Can one person make a difference? Really, it's the only thing that's going to make a difference. Each one of us. It's the only thing that's going to make a difference. It's the only place where we can affect that kind of changes within ourselves. And that's what we teach, right? That's what new thought is all about. That's what science of mind is all about. The peace is already fully present. Right where you sit, right where you stand, anywhere you are, peace is fully present within each one of us. All the time, it's available. It's just waiting to be expressed. It's just waiting to be expressed. And the reason I know that is because I know there's only one source of life. There's only one source, one substance of everything we see. People, plants, animals, one source. So if we really want to own this truth, we might have to look at our personal thoughts, our words, our behaviors. Because I believe this, that life is full of choice. At every moment, we're at a point of choice. At every moment. And so we can choose to be peaceful in the face of anything. We have that choice. We have that ability. And we can't avoid choosing. We choose all the time, whether we're recognizing it's a choice or not. But every action, every thought, every belief... It's a choice. It's a choice that that we're down to. So we can't avoid it. But what we do so often is we choose from this field, this perceived field of limitation. We choose from this perceived field that we have no choice. Instead of choosing from the infinite, endless field of possibilities. Which science tells us this is what's going on. I mean, this isn't a new thought. But it's not true that there's limit that there's a limit to what we can do. That's just not true. And we can full, play full out. And I, so I invite you to do that. I invite you to do that. Because the original life, that source of all that is, is infinite, God, good. And it's filled with peace. So it's right here with us. And I agree with Ernest Holmes when he says that it's not the natural order of things for us to be at war with one another. It's not the natural order of things. Only when the individual mind ceases combating itself will it stop combating others. So I'm going to ask you again. What are you willing to sacrifice for peace? What are you willing to sacrifice for peace? I imagine, Hector, that you sacrificed at some point um, feeling like you're standing alone to say that peace is patriotic. That there there, there might have been some people in your world, people that you you served with, that maybe don't agree. Lots Lots of them. So you had to sacrifice that feeling of fitting in to belong to a higher truth, to belong to your own personal beliefs and to what you know is possible for the world. Yeah, yeah. Are you willing to sacrifice anger? Are we willing to sacrifice anger or being right to find a new way to express our disagreement? I mean, because we do disagree with people, and there's nothing wrong with that. And we can find compromise and consensus, and we can, we can do all of that in a way that is not aggressive. We can forgive past grievances. Are you willing to sacrifice those grievances? Yeah, good, good. I think it's time. I think it's time. You know, complaints, judgments about each other, judgments, complaints about our government, our leadership in the government, our political parties. Those are grievances. There's some level of aggression. And when we can find ourselves on the other side of that, when we can find ourselves on the other side where peace resides, rather than fighting opposition, but in a place that, that 
We can show up as peace. We can show up in our authentic self. We can show up with our beliefs, and I guarantee you we make an impact. I know that we do. In 1957, A.J. Musty said, no way to peace, peace is the way. This sits in my living room. Has for many years. And so this man was transformed into a revolutionary labor leader before being transformed into a radical prophet of Christian pacifism. He had a prophetic vision of the world being peace-filled. And so he was willing to sacrifice his job because he had to. He was kicked out of the ministry. And this was his passion, but he had another passion. And so he followed it, and he knew peace was possible. And there's other people like him. There's many other people who have sacrificed everything for what they believed in. Martin Luther King, Jr., Mother Teresa, you know, the idea of protest, right? The idea of protest. She said, you know, don't invite me to an anti-war demonstration because I'm not coming. But you invite me to a pro-peace rally, and I'm there. I'm there. You know, in our country, we have the war on drugs. We have war on poverty, which is absurd. I, I can't even wrap my head around what that means. War on poverty. So our, our language, our personal, personal language, our culture, um, these are things that I think we can have a grand impact upon. There's energy around those words that we use. And so maybe we sacrifice some of that. Sacrifice for peace. There's a, a, a man named Gil Fonsdale who has been a practicing Buddhist since 19. 19- 75, and he's been teaching since 1990. And he says that this pest pre- mm, sorry, this quest for peace is a very Buddhist philosophy, part of their Buddhist practice. And so he tells us that beyond the abstract concept of peace, we can really put it into practice. So I want to share some of that. That we can live in a way that we recognize our agitation and our conflicts within ourselves so then, then we can make a better choice, right? So we can make a better choice. We got to be mindful of this. This is, I, I almost feel like I almost always come back to that. We have to become aware first that we're feeling that way, that we're feeling agitated or, or angry or whatever. But there's a equanimity, there's a calmness that we can reach within ourselves, which is not grasping, but an understanding, an awareness, and an understanding. And from that comes that knowledge that's from experience, right? And I know that we all want that kind of experience of peace, a really deep experience of peace. So he, he says that once we become aware and understand and know deep peace, we can live it. And we know it and we teach it as a quality of, of spirit, as the presence of spirit itself, right? Right? So what we're really doing is recognizing that allness, that fullness, that divinity, that divine light in all of life. And then when we're easily poised and calm and centered in peace, we can recognize that it resides within us, that it's not found out there, it's within us. And then we can draw upon it anytime we need to. That's the key. When we know we didn't leave it at home in a drawer, when we know it's not, you know, with someone else or someone else's behavior, when we know that we carry it within us, it's way easier to extract it, right? To invite it out. If you notice in your program, we have our core values in there. And second core value is peace. And this came from from many, many, many sessions of visioning, much prayer, much meditation with a group of people. And so we came up with these core values, and you'll see that, that peace is talking about that awareness, that understanding, that knowledge, that ability to put it into practice, that ability to vibrate peace, to be it wherever you go. 
So I want to turn this question around, what are you willing to sacrifice for peace, and ask, what do you sacrifice peace for? What do you sacrifice peace for? To be right, to win, could be a million answers there. But again, Gil Fonsdale says that this offers some insight when we look at those questions deeply. And he suggests that after meditation, when we arrive, arise after being seated and still, that we do so calmly, begin our day, go about our day, and then recognize at the first opportunity that has come about for us to be off of that, for us to fall off of that center, for us to, to feel ourselves disconnected with the idea of peace. And so I wonder if we can do that. I think it takes practice. You know, all this, week, all this month we've been meeting in the morning of several people. Um, I think we had eight, eight, eight or nine people this past Tuesday at Julie Birch's house for her, for her to teach us a way of mindfulness that she has learned by a man named Sinjin Young. Sinjin Young. And it's called Unified Mindfulness. And so there's a great practice to be able to sit and feel. And what she talked about last week was feeling in a deeper way, not just feeling that, oh, my joints hurt that I'm sitting down for so long, or my knees hurt because I'm sitting in a lotus position, or my leg has fallen asleep, but beyond that superficial feeling to maybe tightness in the chest. What does that mean? And to look into it. Am I, am I holding on to some anger? Am I upset? Am I anxious about something? And to really feel and look deeply into these emotions that do show up in our body. So we can ask ourselves some questions while we're in that state. And you might be able to hear some answers right now as I ask these questions. In your life right now, what are you treating more important than peace? What are you treating as if it were more important than peace? And is it really worth giving up your peace for? And when we stop and look like that, that deeply, we can see some beliefs and some ideas that we have that maybe need to be revisited. So ask yourself, if a thought that you had prompted an agitation, what's the nature of the thought? Is it necessary to pick that thought up in such a way that you lose your inner sense of being, your inner sense of well-being, your inner sense of peace? And this one I say for myself out loud. Do the reasons for rushing and being anxious or irritated Hold up under this kind of questioning. Busyness. It's one of the things I look at. And then I get short-tempered when I'm in that place. i feeling like, oh, there's too much to do. And I have an agitation about it. Are you willing to sacrifice something blank for what you believe in? Lots of people have demonstrated that in our country. Lots of people. Let's start with the pilgrims. They sacrificed life, right? For what they believed in, for their religious freedom. I would not be able to stand here, probably today, with the freedom to say whatever I believe. We have that in this country. Thank you to people who have come before us for that. Sojourner Truth. She risked a lot for the abolition of slavery, as did many, many people. Susan B. Anthony and others who risked jail time, all kinds of violence to allow women to vote. Rosa Parks. 
she risked. She was willing to, to sacrifice for what she believed in. So these sacrifices in our country have moved us forward. And so to me, that that's part of the idea of evolution, right? Like I said earlier, I think we can do better. We can jump higher, run faster. We can do better when it comes to our anger. We can do better. I believe that. So I love this quote of Mark Twain. He says, Patriot, pra- Patriot, okay, say it for me. Patriotism <laughs> is supporting our country all the time and our government when it deserves it. There's modern-day activists that are willing to sacrifice, too. They sacrifice their time, their money, their community, their friendships. So let's bring it home again to us personally. What are you willing to sacrifice to have the full-out experience that life has available for you? What are you willing to sacrifice to have your dreams and your desires come true? And I'm thinking beyond peace in this moment. Because anything's possible for us. I suggest that one of the things that we have to sacrifice is the mental diet that we've been on. Right? The mental diet that we've been on. We, we have to sacrifice our negativity. We have to sacrifice old beliefs, old behaviors that no longer serve us. So what are you willing to sacrifice for good health? What are you willing to sacrifice for good health? Donuts? <laughs> Eclairs? Pop-tarts? Too much sitting in front of the TV? What are we willing to sacrifice for friendships, for love? Our fear? I suggest that's probably first. Our fear of being hurt, our fear of vulnerability, our discomfort in exposing who we are. What are we willing to sacrifice to feel peace? Our anxiety, our our belief in separation. I think we can take these practices into any area of our lives and improve them because we have a choice. We have a choice. We always have a choice. We have the choice of freedom to think the way we choose to think. So here's what I'd like to do. Let's go into that place in consciousness that we know is fully creative. And we choose. We choose right now. We choose a better way choose an improvement. We choose a, a higher thought around the idea of discord, of disagreement. For I know that that one which is life, which gives life, which animates our lives, is not a place of disagreement is not a thing of conflict, but a thing of love, a thing of peace, a thing of joy, a thing that wants to express itself in, as, and through each one of us in magnificent ways. That divinity, which is within all things, all people, desires peace. So I affirm right now for each one of us that experience, and the release of what no longer serves us. So in your own mind, let go. Let go of those thoughts. Let go of those beliefs. Those behaviors.
I affirm our willingness to give up our anxiety, our fears, our anger. And to allow that peace and love which, which rides which rises from within us to have its way. This is the choice. This is the choice. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to know this truth, to know this ability for each one of us that we have a power and a presence within us that we can use. And so I'm grateful in advance, knowing that already in the mind of God, we are so unique and special and cherished. And our lives are worth living. So I accept this truth and I release it with great celebration, knowing that it is so and so it is. Hmm. Thank you.